Good afternoon. Welcome to the tea table. I am so happy you've joined me today. And it's September still. We're getting towards the end, but I thought we'll still come outside for today. And then when I got out here, I had just a little green jacket on, I'll show you, and a scarf, but it was so cold, I grabbed another shawl. So we're going to have a cozy September tea time. And if you haven't gotten your tea yet, please pause and get your tea and I'll be waiting for you. Well, this time of year, I love green and I'm wearing one of my favorite greens, which is a moss green. And it is, I kind of feel like it's a Robin Hood green and mixed with a little bit of a French green. I have a shawl. And so what I, I'll show it to you here. It's so pretty. This is a silk shawl that's small. And when I had it with just this, it was like this. But when it got a little cold, I thought, well, I need to get a little shawl. So I have it. And if it warms up, I'll take it off. This is what we have to do in the Pacific Northwest and in England and in Northern Europe. It's called layering and you just keep layering and it's the best way. Well, I have a beautiful, special prize to show you that one of my dear friends, we went to lunch and it wasn't a special occasion. It was just back to school for us or September and she brought me a gift, so special. And I, I rewrapped it to show you, isn't this beautiful? This is what she presented me with at the lunch. And I thought, oh my, and here it is green, my autumn color. So we are going to use this gift on the tea table today. And it's from my dear friend, Patricia. Thank you, Patricia. I have several things on the tea table that represent friendship and events. Look how lovely this is wrapped. And she wrapped it with the green inside the iridescent. And then even in here, the cup and saucer, beautiful, has a little paper in it. Because, oh, oh, that's right. There was something else. She brought me a shell. Isn't that with a pearl? And this is from New England, from Cape Cod. She went back this summer to her family her sister lives on Cape Cod. Look at that beautiful pearl. So we're going to put that right here on the tea table. And I am going to use this cup today. So I'm going to put the paper away. It's always hard for me when I get a beautifully wrapped package. I don't want to throw the paper away. I try to use it again for another event. So, well, the sun's out. I think I'm gonna just take this off for now, and then I'll, I might, it'll be right here if I need it, okay? But for now, I'm, I feel a little German in this hat. It has one of these feathers that the Germans love to put a feather in their cap. And this is called, this is actually Loden Green in Germany. They use it a lot in the costumes. Well, now I have so much to show you. Okay, I want to protect this cup. This cup, is that just gorgeous? It has pedestal feet, little gold pedestal feet. And she said it's from a very special collection. It's Nippon, and that was China made 
I believe right after the war in Japan, that European China makers sent their designs and had them manufactured there. So this is very special. And I thought, whoa, I need a, what can I put with it to have a pot that matches? So let me show you what I came up with. And then I'm gonna put that cup on the tea tray, but my tea tray is full. Okay, this is a Limoges pot, and really it's probably a coffee pot, but I'm using it for tea today. And this is a little pitcher that I found in my china closet, and it is also Nippon. And then this candle is so special. We had a special event a couple weeks ago, and my daughter, my oldest daughter, Victoria, brought me this candle. She made this. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my, it has such a wonderful scent. It has all the autumn spices in it. Isn't that beautiful? So I wanted that to be here on the tea table. And then I found a beautiful rustic rose in my garden and a little gold Aladdin vase I had sitting on my piano. And now what I want to show you is my flowers, my little mums in a brown, it's a you know, it's like Baltic Amber. I love this color. See, my Baltic Amber ring is almost the same color. Oh, there's the sun. Oh, wow. It's almost the same color. And when I pick these flowers out, you can see through. You can see the, there, you can see the amber color. And then I put the flowers in. I love that. It's just, so wonderful for September. Well, I have another special, very special thing. Dear Marilee and her daughter sent me from the tea. You're on my tea talk. For September, they sent me this box of tea and it's Earl Grey Extra Bold. And it is so nice because they are individually wrapped. So I have already used quite a bit of this box. I love this tea. It is delicious. And I have several of these bags in my car in a little plastic sealed bag. And if I want tea when I'm out, I'll just go get a hot water through a drive up, you know, pay them for the hot water. And I have my tea. Isn't that good? It's a good idea because sometimes you just want a cup of tea and you're doing errands. Well, now let's pour out and then I want to show you the most special thing I have brought to you today. Now, let's see. This is such a beautiful Limoges French China has been very famous through all the years. The French have the design of such romance and this is such a beautiful picture. And then the, <laughs> I just love all these colors. They're so wonderful. Oh my goodness. Look at that golden yellow cup. Isn't that beautiful? Mm, we're listening to Beethoven today, but I have him down a little softer than normal because his music goes so loud and then so soft. Mm. Oh my, that is delicious, delicious, delicious. Well, now I want to show you what else I brought for the treat. This is so special. I said I went to a special event. It was a baby shower. Yes, our son Gabe and daughter-in-law Heather are expecting a baby in October. And they had a wonderful shower and she gave me these for the tea table. 
there was a whole little plate of them that says, whoops, let's see if I can get it up there. In gold, it says Baby Shoemaker. And it was done by Swanky Sweet in Yakima, Washington. And then look at this, darling. They had a little baby bottle. Well, there was one more cookie and it broke on the way home. And so somebody ate it. I won't tell who, but we had three to start with. But isn't this just the September fall colors and so adorable. I just think this takes the cake. I don't want to eat them. I'm going to just save them as kind of that's written so beautifully in gold. Baby Shoemaker. So sweet. Well, so this is how the tea tray actually looks when I have everything on it. Let's see. I'm going to put the cup back on. It's just everything matches so nice. And this yellow cup is just made for this set. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that sweet? I love to create little themes and it's not hard. We're in the fall now, so everybody wants to put fall things out and I love this little mum. I have this on my table and I water it. I try to have as many real flowers as I can have. And I know a lot of times the fall flowers, when they're real, they will shed, but some of them are quite good and they don't shed. Let me see what this, I guess that's how it goes. I'm looking in the, <laughs> I think I have my hat on right. I think it's right. And so, well, are you reading good books? I've been reading and studying and preparing for my class and I just love September. It just welcomes me and I've been sitting by my fire and this is the first day, however, that I lit a candle, but I'm going to have this little candle going. Isn't that beautiful? Just so sweet. She put in it, um, Mm, she, what did she tell me? She put in it very exotic uh, spices. I can't remember all of them. And then a friend of mine gave me a little sample, a little free sample of, it's called, what is it? Smoky Cherry Perfume Tom Ford. It's extremely expensive, but she gave me this little sample and I've been spraying it. Oh. It smells like the beginning of all good things in autumn. Sometimes just a little touch of something new is so nice, isn't it? Well, I was walking through my library and this book caught my eye and I thought I'll just bring one book to the tea table today. Now, I don't know if any of you have read The Prince by Machiavelli. It is considered one of the great, great books of all time. And of course it was written during the Renaissance. He's Italian, a little bit after Dante. You remember Dante wrote um, such a brilliant, um, the, in, the Inferno, Dante's Inferno, just absolutely incredible book. And my daughter actually has read it. I have a daughter that reads books and she reads them from cover to cover. And you know, she doesn't just grab bag. I am more of a person in those kind of books. I just take a little bit here and there. I have never read the full book and I, I will be honest, I've never read this book, but I know about it. Because I'm a historian, I know about Machiavelli and the story behind this book. I know the story behind it. And it's very interesting because this book changed a lot of history and it changed people. And some of it is not good because Machiavelli was a very sincere young man and he lived in Florence and he 
had listened to the great Savonarola preaching uh, the true gospel of grace and mercy and forgiveness and faith and freedom in Christ, he, Savonarola is a pre, called a precursor to the Reformation. He's before Martin Luther, he's before Calvin. And, you know, there were several very famous precursors. Another is John Wycliffe in England, who was translating the Bible and almost got burned at the stake for it, but survived and died a natural death. There was John Huss, H-U-S-S, -S, in Bohemia, and he was preaching. Also, they had gotten into the scripture and they realized that there was a lot of corruption in the in the church at that time and they didn't want it they were pure souls so savonarola was beloved and he had preached with such pathos and love and heart and everyone in florence loved savonarola well he was threatening to the authorities and to the church the, at that point that is the Roman church in in Rome. And, and he, kind of like a Martin Luther, he was preaching things that they were going to free people from their superstitions and their fear. And it was going, they were going, he was telling them, you can connect to God without going through, um, you know, any of the saints or the priest, you can go directly through prayer. Well, Savonarola sadly, was a martyr and he was burned at the stake and his life is very beloved you can read about him in church history he's one of the very outstanding beautiful souls well when Machiavelli saw that happen to him instead of him turning to God and trusting God that God has a purpose he thought that was so terrible he said it doesn't work to be a nice good person and then the basic philosophy of the prince is the end justifies the means in other words you can do whatever you need to do to get to where you want to go and that's not a good thing and i think what um, machiavelli though he was a brilliant sincere young man i think he didn't have patience to see that god is bigger than really what looked like a terrible tragedy but he he wanted to solve the problem and take it into his own hands and we understand that that's human nature isn't it well you know it's interesting because i was thinking about muhammad it's a similar thing you know if you study his life for the first part he had all these revelations and what he believed was you know god and talking to him and he had visions and he developed his belief system and Allah was God to him and he uh, tried to be kind and love and just let people tell people about the, the news that he had, but it didn't work. He didn't make any converts. And so he also was not patient and he thought, oh, okay, this isn't going to work. I got to do it another way. I got to take it into my... So he went the total other extreme and took a sword and said, either you believe or off with your head. That was, you know, the sword. That's a symbol on their, the, the flag. So I think there's an analogy and you find this in church history. You find things that connect and it's, it's actually a message for us. We are all human. We all have two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. We all have a body, soul, and spirit. We walk, we talk, we reason. The animals don't talk. The animals don't reason. They have, they have a, um, like a soul, but they don't have a spirit because we're connected to God. We have an eternal soul that will go to be with God if we walk with him. He promises right and of course I believe there's animals in heaven because the lion is going to lay down with the lamb and God is fair and many of our little 
pets could be in heaven. You know, we don't know. When the Bible is silent about that, we we don't know. But But anyway, the bottom line is we have a lot in common with these people. We all have a tendency. If things don't work exactly the way we want them, right when we want them, we think, well, we got to try another way. But that's not always the case. In fact, in God's economy, we don't want to ever violate principles of right and wrong to get an end that we desire, right? And conversely, we don't want to live by fear. We want to live by faith. And I've concluded in my life and observing and my studies, and biblical studies, historical studies, people studies, it boils down to two things. Are you going to live by faith or are you going to live by fear? And when we live by faith, because the Bible says the just shall live by faith. Faith is trust and knowing that God is bigger than our problems. God is bigger than us. And we can relax in that and not have the stress. We were not created to run the show. No, we weren't. God gives all of us jobs to do. They all vary. But the job has to have a good motive to be right. It has to have a pure motive to love our neighbor as ourselves, to do good to those, even to those who do not do good to us. Jesus said, do good to those who despitefully use you. Bless those that curse you. Because usually the difficult people have problems. And by showing them God's love, we can often win their hearts. Yes, we can. And that takes faith. It takes an enormous amount of faith. But why not? Otherwise, just like when Joshua and Caleb went into the land, and then the other scouts were sent in by Moses to see what was Can before they took Canaan, what was Canaan like? Well, Joshua and Caleb came back and they said, there's grapes and we can take the land. They had so much faith. All they could see was the good. The others came back and they said, oh no, there's giants in the land. We can't take it. They were filled with fear. And you know that principle is a classic repeating principle right to our very lives. And I tell you, when we move in faith, God loves it. He blesses us. It's like when Peter, Jesus called him to come out of the boat. And when Peter had faith and had his eyes on Jesus, he walked on the water. Yes, it all worked. So the real call is that I want to share for September, getting back to school, back to study is patience with one another, patience with ourselves. Don't be too hard on yourself. God is not a hard on us. It says God is merciful toward his people. Oh, there's an airplane, whoa. here from Fort Lewis and um, they do operations and practice runs. So, but boy, did you see the moon the other night? Did you see the full beautiful moon? And I think it's going to be out again tonight. The problem is every night it gets a little later and it's harder to stay up, isn't it? Yes. 
this tea is in this cup with this pitcher is so delicious. And you know, it all is kind of, this is almost like a yellow, yellowy green. And this is the green and then this has the greens. It has the fall feeling, I think, it really does. And these darling little cookies for the baby. I just love it. So sweet. Yes. You know, bakers are the most creative people. And I have to tell you, oh, I love this Beethoven. I fell in love with this when I was in Vienna with Karen. Karen de Pastel, who is part of this tea talk. She had the group perform this, St. Peter's Cathedral in Vienna, just a little ways down from St. Stephen's. Oh, I just love this. Symphony number no. seven in A major. And my daughter was a part of this and another friend, and then she had the choir and she had fabulous singers. I fell in love with Beethoven that trip when we went. I did not know how truly, this is just, ah, I love this. Such a driving, strong beat. Um, Beethoven, yes. Oh, it's interesting because I tried to put something else on my iPad but nothing would come on but Beethoven. And so I thought, well, it's meant for today. So Karina in Vienna, this is for you. She's a great pipe organist and a conductor. She runs a music camp every summer in Lilienfeld and it's been going for years and she helps so many musicians. She was a professor of piano and pedagogy and pipe organ at the University of Vienna. And she is Karen, uh, the daughter of Helen, our violin teacher who passed away in her 90s of, about five years ago. And we miss beloved Helen so much. In fact, I think it's appropriate I'm wearing this green hat. This is something Helen would definitely have loved and worn because she had a lot of German costumes. She was from Berlin originally. Yes, wonderful person. Actually, she was half Swedish. Her father was ran the hospital in Berlin during World War II, and his name was Orland, and he was from that island of Orland, Sweden, right above Germany, yes. And he was a kind, good man, and he wanted everyone to be fairly, even if the prisoners of war came in, he said, everyone gets the same amount of food. He was very fair. And actually some of the officials didn't like that. They didn't want him to give the same to everyone. But he said, no, we must be fair and just. And that reminds me actually of my father who is Norwegian. It was very important to him. Everything had to be equal and fair. All the children had to get the same amount, no favoritism. Every, and that is such a biblical principle because God loves all of us, believe it or not. You look around and maybe there's some people you don't like, but guess what? God loves them as much as he loves you. Now, isn't that a shock? But it's true, it's true. God doesn't look at the outside. He looks at the heart. What a comfort. What a beautiful comfort. Our God is so good. Well, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and share it with somebody that you think of the kindred heart that would enjoy the tea talk. And everyone is welcome. And please um, push the notification bell and you will be notified. And if you liked it or wanna leave a comment, or you want to, me to cover something that I haven't covered, a country or an idea, please share with me. I'm open. I want to, I want to have as much variety on the tea talk as possible. 
Well, God bless each one. And I pray that we will all be strong. We will be patient. We will be loving. We will be kind. We will be merciful. And we will trust God when things don't seem perfect. We don't have to take it into our own hands. We can give it to him and let him take care of things. Yes, that's the best way. It's good for your health. Oh, there's this. Oh my goodness. Let's just play this. Beethoven is so beautiful and he was deaf at the end of his life and yet he was still writing because he had the music in his head oh I love this I just love this this was the symphony number seven well it's I hate to say goodbye it's been so much fun today Take out your autumn tones and colors and enjoy your tea. And if you want a good one, I tell you, if you like strong tea, this extra bold, really good. Okay, well, God bless. And I will look forward to seeing you next time.